vicious and bloody battles. The pups are dependent on their mothers for six to twelve months. But then, accompanied by their parents, they begin to make tentative visits into the open sea. The ocean is rich in food. The fur seals, as they're also called, feed on anchovies, squid, crustaceans, occasionally even penguins. It's a seal's paradise, but a paradise that is soon lost. This pod of orcas, also known as killer whales, know these shores well. When the tide is high, they swim over the reef and take the pups in the water, or even snatch them right off the beach. It's a real baptism of fire for the youngsters, and even the adults aren't always safe. There are orcas in every single ocean. Some are transients, cruising about looking for food. Others are residents, like this pod in Patagonia, who perfected their hunting skills over many years. Other groups of orcas will rarely enter their territory. They're not really whales at all, but a species of dolphin. And they're renowned for the way they call to each other, each pod using its own distinct dialect, which is different from any other. The calves are born about every four years, and their mothers teach them how to hunt, including catching fur seals. And so the knowledge passes from one generation to the next. But do you know how to tell the difference between a sea lion and a seal? The sea lion has ears that are visible. The seal simply has openings on the side of its head. And do you know that it's not lions that kill the most people in Africa each year? It's the hippo, as it aggressively defends its territory. We head out east now, over the Atlantic, to the Gombe National Park in Tanzania where the chimpanzee population has been studied more closely than anywhere else. Chimpanzees are highly intelligent and highly social animals, sharing over 98% of our human genes. They communicate with each other using a whole vocabulary of grunts, gestures and visual signs. They live in groups 30 to 80 strong, dispersed in a number of bands, the individuals constantly moving from one band to the next. The alpha male leads the group, but it's important to establish the social relationship between the individuals, 
And one way they do this is by greeting and grooming each other. Close relatives will even throw their arms around each other, kiss and pat each other on the back, just like we do. Everyone thought they lived on a diet of fruit, leaves, nuts and insects. But now it appears they have an appetite for meat too. They make use of various tools and use sticks and stones as weapons. But when it comes to hunting, they employ a very human technique. Cooperation. Most of the hunting is carried out by the adult males, with the females and the young joining in, but usually staying on the ground. Their prey here in Gombe is the colobus monkey. Once sighted, the monkey is tracked down in an almost military manoeuvre. When on the attack, the chimps move in an organised way, regroup to exchange information and surround their quarry on all sides. Most hunts result in the death of a single colobus. But sometimes the chimps go on a binge and can kill many more than that. And here's a daunting statistic if you're a colobus monkey. When there are more than 10 chimps in the group, they're 100% successful. Two factors seem to provoke these hunts. Firstly, the dry season when food is scarce. But perhaps more important, the hunting occurs especially frequently when the females are sexually receptive. The males bribe the females with meat, hoping to get sexual access. There's also an all-male power game going on. The successful hunters use the meat as a political tool, doling it out to allies, withholding it from rivals. But the chimps, our closest relatives in the animal world, are being squeezed out of their forest homes. Although they're found in many African countries, in only four are there still significant populations. We don't have to move far for our next story just a few hundred kilometers northeast for a predator that's remained unchanged since the days of the dinosaur. At the end of the rainy season, Nile crocodiles gather in the Grometi River which flows through Tanzania's Serengeti. Their habitat in tropical rivers, swamps and marshes has remained fundamentally the same for millions of years and so have they. Crocs are solitary creatures, fiercely territorial, and will fight each other during the breeding season. But each year, when the catfish concentrate in the river pools, brotherly love breaks out. Suddenly, up to 70 crocodiles suspend hostilities and work together. In an extraordinary display of cooperation, they form a living dam to trap the catfish in shallow water. The 
catfish known as squid.